Welcome into BLTV Channel 6. I'm Brian Kell. We've reached out to many of the candidates in races throughout our service territory, some of the more hotly contested races throughout our service territory, and we are proud to have one of those candidates here with us today at this table. He is running for Van Buren County Sheriff. His name is Michael Brock. Michael, thanks so much for coming in. The pleasure is mine. Thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about you. Okay. My name is Michael Brock. I'm running for Sheriff in Van Buren County. Um, I have lived in Van Buren County most of my life, raised there, and uh, graduated there in 1991. Built my life there, married, and uh, me and my wife currently still reside there in the uh, Baker Mountain community. But um, I have uh, worked 18 years prior to law enforcement in manufacturing, and in that I worked various roles of supervisory and management. Um, like I said, for 18 years. Then in 2010, I was given the opportunity to go to work for the city of Spencer for the police department. I began that in April of 2010. Um, I worked as a patrolman, uh, graduating the Tennessee Law Enforcement Training Academy in Nashville. Uh, in 2012, I was recognized by the Governor's Highway Safety Office as the Cumberland Region's Officer of the Year. Mm -hmm. And that was due to uh, just my work on active patrol. In 2013, there was a vacancy uh, in the role of chief for the Spencer Police Department, and uh, the city officials approached me and asked me to consider filling that vacancy. And after we talked about that, and uh, I told them I was definitely willing to try to serve the city in that capacity. So that began in 2013, and I still am in that position today. Uh, so. Uh, I love working for the city of Spencer. Uh, that's home to me, and uh, I do the best that I can to try to serve the citizens and uh, to be there for me when they be there for them when they need me. Recently, a uh, Metro Nashville lawmaker announced that she would introduce a resolution uh, urging the Metro Nashville Police Department uh, to make enforcement of the abortion ban a quote unquote low priority. What are your thoughts on lawmakers pushing uh, for low priority enforcement of laws to police departments? And I guess the second part of that question would be, do you have certain <clears throat> laws that you place as low priority on enforcement? And my answer to this question is, uh, as law enforcement officers, of course, we do not make the laws, but we are tasked with enforcing the law and upholding those laws and ordinances that are made by those lawmakers who we elect. Um, so that's what we're tasked with doing. However, at the same time, it's uh, the burdens on us to also work to strive to uh, protect the rights that are given to our citizens through and by our Constitution. Um, as far as priorities, um, I may have to prioritize my response to an incident or an investigation or some type of allegation that is uh, given to me. I may have to prioritize that uh, as it uh, comes to me and look at the, th the imminent threat that is associated with that and then base my response on that because we are we're a small department. Uh, but I will say that I actively work to respond to each and everything that comes my way. So uh, if I do prioritize it, it's only because there's maybe something ahead of the line of that that, uh, that I would view as being a more imminent threat or a danger or something that needs to be addressed. What role uh, should the Sheriff's Department play in successfully promoting public safety? I believe the Sheriff's Department should play the preeminent role in promoting public safety. Um, the citizens of our counties make a statement of trust when they go to the ballot and they cast a vote for us to fill the office of sheriff, and uh, we shouldn't take that lightly. So our presence in their communities, in our communities, uh, the presence of the sheriff as well as the presence of uh, his deputies in our communities of our counties gives us two opportunities off the bat. It gives us the opportunity to build those relationships with our citizens, uh, to build relationships of trust and confidence uh, with the sheriff and his deputies, while at the same time, uh, our presence uh, works as a deterrence mm -hmm. to possible criminal activity in those communities. So thereby we're, get, we're gaining two, uh, gaining ground in two ways of uh, promoting public safety. One, by building those relationships and forming those relationships with our citizens while at the same time our presence is deterring possible criminal activity. I think the sheriff's office can also and should, the sheriff, from the sheriff down, should reach out to initiate conversations uh, 
and uh, communication with our schools, businesses, churches, uh, those kind of uh, civic organizations in our communities to evaluate public safety in all of those facets. And as we look at that, if we find any discrepancies to address them, to work together, to educate ourselves and to train ourselves and be the best that we can be uh, for whatever situation presents itself to us. What is your view of alternatives to incarceration, such as uh, diversion into mental health or addiction treatment programs as a way of promoting public safety? Okay, mental illness uh, and mental health issues, um, I would, uh, I'm, I, don't, I was gonna say I'll be the first to say it, probably not the first one to say it, but uh, incarceration is probably not where they're gonna find the help that they need. Uh, although uh, several people may find themselves being incarcerated, uh, I have in the past actively worked with uh, patients of mental illness as well as their families to try to find the best avenue uh, to, to bring about a positive result in their situation. Um, it's hard, it's hard to find those, uh, you know, you're, there's a lot of maybe scrutiny or a lot of pressure uh, in society on police response to folks with mental illness. Mm. Uh, I would say uh, that my record shows that I've tried to take the time to work with those kinds of folks through those situations because I know that incarceration uh, in most of those situations is not the answer. Um, these folks need help. I want to try to get them the help and I've reached out uh, to uh, various organizations and tried to educate myself some. I got a lot, I've got a lot farther to go in it, I'm sure. Um, I've tried to train my guys also to provide training uh, currently to the officers at the Sheriff's Department on better response to folks with mental illness, uh, mental health issues. So uh, we're going to keep working forward on that, whether I remain as the Chief of Police or if I move on into the Sheriff's Department. But um, as far as addiction uh, problems and uh, issues and addiction treatment, um, I have repetitively repetitively encouraged folks to to find a good program and tried to work with them to find a good program mm -hmm. and encourage them to enter that program and work it uh, because I want to see them succeed in life I want to see them succeed and get uh, freedom from that addiction I think the difference in this situation is uh, these folks who are battling these addictions they need to be honest with their self and admit that they need help and then they really have to want help and put forth their best effort. Uh, and I think the burden then falls on us to come alongside of them and to encourage them and to help them. Uh, I know the 31st Judicial Drug Court has had a lot of successes. Uh, I've learned more about that during this campaign uh, and it's been encouraging. So I appreciate all the work that those folks do and helping lives get turned around and I look forward to working with them as we go forward. Yeah. The recent shooting in Uvalde, Texas, everyone mm. has heard about that, has caused many parents to question, you know, local police forces on the response to a situation involving a shooter at a school. What can you say to parents watching now in Van Buren County to assure them of your department's response to that type of situation if you become sheriff? Uh, the folks in Van Buren County know that I love Van Buren County. Um, you folks are my folks. And uh, the promise, uh, the affirmation that I can give you is this. Uh, should any type of incident like this arise, then I would respond as swiftly as possible uh, to stop and bring a stop to this threat as soon as possible. Um, our children are, are our most valuable resource. And uh, I want to work towards seeing those children being brought up through the community, through the schools, uh, to have successful, happy lives. Um, the guys who work with me in my department, they know and understand the responsibility that's laid upon us. Uh, again, I'm not making any kind of excuse or trying to paint a picture that's inaccurate. We're, we're a small department. But we, we talk about these things and we train for these things. We know the responsibility that lays upon us to respond. Uh, when I say I will be responding, uh, that may be because I'm the only one on duty in, in the city limits that day. But I assure you that I will be responding as soon as possible. And when my guys hear this word or hear this uh, dispatch call, they're going to be responding as soon as possible. Uh, we're working actively with the school 
this this past school year the city of Spencer assumed the, the positions of the school resource officer so now they fall under our guides um, <clears throat> since doing that we've worked with the uh, Van Buren County school system uh, to address matters of safety uh, to look for those uh, at the same time educating themselves educating us and uh, we're already uh, talking and have plans in place to uh, as we enter into a new school year shortly uh, to continue our training and not just to continue our training and education but to bring the school system along with us mm -hmm. to, so that we all are more confident and better prepared jail life can from time to time get scrutiny uh, mm -hmm. you've got two extremes probably bread and water only and then maybe another extreme that would say it's it's a college dorm type atmosphere how do you ride the line between those two extremes and kind of what is your your thought on what jail life should be uh, even though those folks have been convicted and they are incarcerated uh, for a reason then we still treat them with respect they're still human beings. They're someone's family member. Uh, however, if they find themselves if they find themselves incarcerated, they're there for a reason. Uh, and uh, I will say, I don't know all of the uh, dainties that may be provided to them, but uh, if I'm elected to be sheriff, those things will be reviewed. I do believe uh, that those individuals finding themselves incarcerated need to realize that life's not going to be the same on the inside as it would be if they were outside and that's the penalty uh, that they need to pay for to society we're talking with michael brock uh, who's running for van buren county sheriff michael at this time if you would maybe maybe address the people that are out there watching got a, got a couple of minutes here to maybe speak to them as to why you're the best candidate for the sheriff of van buren county thank you um Again, my name is Michael Brock, and uh, I have actively tried to serve the city of Spencer since 2010 as a patrolman and then since 2013 as your chief of police. Um, I think my track record proves that uh, I've been honest and fair, uh, and I've tried to work diligently to resolve the issues that have been brought to me. If you uh, would cast your vote and put your trust in me to serve you as your next sheriff, then I will diligently strive to do the best job that I can to serve you as the citizens and to lead the department and uh, to help it become the best that it possibly can be. Michael, thank you. Thank you. And we want to thank you for watching here on BLTV Channel 6. A reminder that Thursday, August 4th, starting at 7 p.m., we will have live election coverage covering six counties that night. And so, uh, again, 7 p.m., not only on BLTV Channel 6, but also on BLTV Channel 306, our HD channel. And also, too, Facebook Live on the Ben Loman Connect account and YouTube Live on our Ben Loman Connect YouTube channel. So many different ways to be able to catch that coverage. We hope to see you then and take care.